Major sponsors for Ableton on Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Aleh Israel, Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International. Hello and welcome to this edition of Able Done On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler, and Arlene is here today. Say hi, Arlene. Arlene Seiler. Hello. Yes. Um, on this uh, episode of Able Done On Air, before we get to our uh, to our uh, episode today. Uh, and we're going to talk about the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, Allah Israel, and many other sponsors. Uh, thank you for uh, sponsoring Able Then On Air. Now, um, we'd like to introduce Alice Goltz. Uh, she is a mother of a child with a... Uh, uh, she is she is a uh, disabled person who we've had on the show um, previously in 2015 when Ableton on Air first started um, here at Orca Media. Uh, Alice, why don't you tell a little bit about your story? Um, hi, my name is is um, Alice Goltz, and I just wanted to share with you I'm a parent with a disability. And um, my rights were taken away from me due to my disability. How were your rights, uh, just so people can understand your story, uh, again, how were your rights taken away being disabled? My rights were taken away as the state of Vermont had not given me any services that were recommended by Dr. Susan Yuan. And um, this went into to court when they were terminating my parental rights. Mm -hmm. And um, it states in the um, in the Miranda that that um, the state of Vermont DCF is supposed to give parents with disabilities reasonable accommodations, and it just was disregarded by the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. Um, well, why don't you explain a little bit, well, there's a law that's supposed to be passed, according to what you told me, there's a law that's supposed to be passed, um, by the, along with the Disability Law Project, uh, if I'm not, cur if I'm not mistaken, it's in Washington, D.C., right? Um, yes. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and when it's supposed to be coming to pass? Well, I don't, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but on Monday the 27th, there'll be a Zoom meeting with um with somebody from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a, se a senator. And that's when I'll be able to, I will be, I will be able to ask questions, and other parents with disabilities will be able to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now, according to certain states, such as uh, South Carolina, let me pull this up quick. Um, according to certain states, such as South Carolina, they already passed a law, as a matter of fact here, South Carolina legislation to protect the rights of parents with disabilities. It was already passed in 2017. Um, it says, according to this, May 11, 2017, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster signed House Bill 3538, which amended South Carolina Code <clears throat> to add a new chapter to the South Carolina Code for Persons with Disabilities Rights to Parent Act, Able South Carolina, 
which is an agency that works with partners including the Department of Social Services, DSS, and Protection of Advocacy People with Disabilities, Inc., to draft a bill which uh, coincides with practices <clears throat> in sharing the protection of rights of individuals with disabilities. The law requires the Department of Social Services in South Carolina law enforcement and the family of probate courts and probate courts, among others, to protect the parenting rights of people with disabilities by establishing uh, requirements and safeguards applicable in child custody, child protection, and probate guardianship proceedings to ensure that persons with disabilities are not denied, the key word here is denied, um, the right to parent or have custody or visitation rights of a child because of a disability. Let's take a look at the old report from Al Jazeera America. Many groups helped Alice Goltz, uh, in, including the Council on Disability in Washington, D.C. Uh, they helped her tell her story through Al Jazeera America. Let's take a look at that report. Every afternoon, Alice Goltz stands at the corner of Union Elementary. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. And every afternoon, she looks at the children she helps cross the street and thinks of the daughter she lost. In, 2000, in 2007, I had a little baby girl. And um, the, day, the day after I gave, I gave birth to my daughter, two men had came into my hospital room stating that DCF was taking custody of my daughter. They already made their minds up that they were gonna have they were gonna have my daughter. That I didn't give my child up. She was taken. She was stolen from me. A nurse first tipped off the DCF, the Department of Children and Families. Alice Goltz has fragile X syndrome, a condition which results in a mild cognitive disability, and her arms shake when she's under stress, a disorder called dystonia. But she insists neither should disqualify her from taking care of her child. I feel my rights were violated as a as a parent with a disability. Parents parents learn differently. You know, it may take me longer, but no parent should have to lose their child. And who are you to make decision who who's a good parent and who's not a good parent? I've never met a parent who's more dedicated to her child than Alice. Really? Ever. Psychologist and parenting expert Susan Yuan assessed Alice twice. UN was tasked to see if Alice was up to the demands of being a single parent. Was Alice fit to be a parent? I definitely believe she's fit to be a parent. I still believe she's fit to be a parent. She needed to build both her skills and her confidence. There were things that she needed to learn, but you figure out how to teach them. But the Department of Children and Families disagreed. With the baby's father out of the picture, they tried to work with Alice for a year but failed to give her social workers trained in handling those with intellectual disabilities. The DCF took Alice's daughter into state custody and moved to terminate Alice's parental rights. You feel like you were set up? Yes. Yeah. Set up to fail? Set up to fail, just like, just like in, in court cases. I felt like this is like being a prisoner. The only thing is I didn't have, I don't have handcuffs on me. Handcuffed by what some say is a bias against parents with disabilities. There are more than 4 million parents living with disabilities. A staggering 80% with intellectual or developmental disabilities have children removed from their homes. 37 states allow disability to be used as a strike against parents seeking custody. The fact that a, a parent has a disability does not in itself um, result in us seeking custody. The question is, does the disability impact the parent's ability to safely parent? Sheila Duran Lowe of Vermont's Department of Children and Families says the answer isn't always easy. I think we can always make improvements in everything that we do, um, and I think we and I think the resource issue is very real. Duran Lowe admits her resources are limited. In Vermont, each social worker handles an average workload of at least 17 families, often with multiple children. Susan Yuan and others fighting for disability rights say more support would protect people with disabilities and their children. 
parents with disabilities aren't going to go away. And people with intellectual disabilities, for instance, are encouraged now to have real lives and to have real relationships. And that can include intimacy. And they're going to be babies. So what we need to do is to build capacity around the country. This is my daughter. One month, two months, three months. Wow, she's beautiful. These were pictures from my visits. Does she know who you are when you're visiting her? Yes. She would wait at the door for me. Really? She looked through the glass window. She knew I was coming. Alice knows she won't get her now eight-year-old daughter back. The little girl was adopted by a foster family. But she holds on to hope that she can maintain a connection with the child she last saw only by chance on a city street. We hugged and kissed, and it was a happy, joyful, sad time. It was just by coincidence? Yes. I guess I was, like, startled, but I was happy, because even though they weren't going to give me a visit, that God was going to make sure I have a visit. Christoph Putzel, Al Jazeera. You ha basically, you had your child, and after birth, after you gave birth, two men came into your, ho into your hospital room. Here, here's the thing what people don't understand. Um, your child knows nothing. Meanwhile, your child got stolen from you, or per se, taken from you by the Department of Children and Families. So what actually happened? Two men came in. They came in unannounced, so you, I mean, you weren't told about this, correct? I wasn't even told about it. Did you know who those two men were? No, and I, and I asked who they were, and they wouldn't tell me. They just had told me there'd be an emergency hearing on Monday, that Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you see, um, the Americans with Disabilities Act does protect people, but who does it protect? It's not really, we have problems here. Uh, under Title II, it's supposed to give uh, technological help for people with disabilities to help with parents, p parenting classes, uh, parenting, counseling, etc. But meanwhile, states are taking your, ch your children away. Does that make sense? No. That doesn't make sense. So there has to be, there, there's problems with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yes, it helps certain things with employment, and, but it needs to help all around. That's the problem. Um, and how do states really determine, yes, you had Susan and Nuon helping you, um, but how do states really determine if a person's really qualified? You, they really can't see, yes, you have tremors, but they really can't see your disability. That's the problem. That was the state. Also, the problem is... No, but that was the state's... But do you get my point here? I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to explain to you is also the judge the judge went against us too, where they disregarded they disregarded the Aranda, what you just had read about yeah. protecting parents. Mm -hmm. That was also put into put into court, which was also disregarded. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Why was it disregarded? Was there a reason? The judge, it was, the judge just didn't care. Mm -hmm. He would fight with, with, with the attorney. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I go on this conference, I am going to talk to them about, about what had happened. Because it shows that it, all along, DCF, did not did not do any, did not want me and my daughter to be reunited. So when this law supposedly is passed, now how old is your daughter now? Thirteen. Wow. Okay. So 
in five more years, supposedly, or five or six more years or so, when your daughter turns 18 or 19, she might come looking for you. But when this, but when this law passes, do you think that this law would give you more rights as a parent? Yes or no? That's what I want to see. What I want to see is about if this is going to help pass cases. That's one question I will. Well, if ask. it's in, well. If it's in, no, I'm not arguing with you. I'm, I'm just, no. we're, we're talking. If this law passes, then the parents or the foster parents that have your child have no choice but to give you visitation rights. So basically, if they don't give you visitation rights, they can either go to jail or or fined or something or, or you know. Yeah, my daughter is, is adopted to these people. People. No, but no, but according to this law, right? Yes. If when you show up at the door with somebody, I mean, obviously, maybe supervised, or I'm not sure. But if you if you show up to the door and ask for visitation, if they don't abide by this law, they can get in trouble. Point blank. Because if there's a law that is being put into place, and if people don't abide by that, then it's in your favor, pretty much. Um, but in terms of the American Disabilities Act, let's, let's get to this. This Sunday we, uh, is the 30th anniversary of the American Disabilities Act. Do you feel that being a parent and also a person with a disability, a person with a challenge, do you feel that the uh, American Disabilities Act needs to change? Uh, because yes. there's a lot of things that people with disabilities, I mean, okay, we're in a current administration. Um, I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to talk bad about the president, but the president has done things like take, take, services away from people with disabilities and from the like state of New York, um, they're getting ready to cut more services. How much services can you cut? You're basically taking from Peter to pay Paul and you're and you're cutting from nothing. And he and he himself has a cell with a disability. Yeah. So no, but I'm saying it, OPWDD in New York, for example, there is in, in so much disarray. First, during coronavirus, they don't allow people who have people in group homes and nursing homes, because uh, you know, see their see their family members. Then they're getting ready to cut certain services. It's like example. It's it's like you have um. A roast beef, right? A, re a really nice roast beef. If you get down to that roast beef and have, um, you know, you're trying to cut the fat away from that roast beef. And if the roast beef has all that fat, it, 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 you're basically cutting the gristle. You, you're cutting from nothing. You can't feed people just the fat. You got to feed them a nutritious meal. See my point? Yes. So, that's the analogy I'm using here. Um, how do you see the American Disabilities Act, how do you see it needs to change, both for being a parent and, and other services? Well, one thing it needs to change is that disabilities the state should not take they should not let the state take away the child and then the federal governments will say it's still your child and we'll get and we'll get because the parent is disabled we'll get a, a portion of that parent's social security because because the parent is disabled 
No, no, no it's explain. Taking away mm. the, the child. This this 1972 law should should be changed too. Mm -hmm. Now, explain to the, to our our listening audience the difference between Social Security and SSI because okay, they're taking the child is taking or the Social Security is being taken and, and given to the child. Okay, you don't have to say the amount, but. On the father's side, they, they, they can't take anything because he, he's on SSI. So what's the yes. difference? What is the difference there between regular SSDI and SSI? SS, SSI is the is considered a needs a needs based program, and SSDI is considered um, when a parent has worked so many, so many years mm -hmm. and has so many, so much credit to add up to get the Social Security disability mm -hmm. as the SSI is the needs-based program. Well, okay, what's a needs-based program mean? Does that mean that the money can't be taken from that program? Yes, it can be. Can't be touched from the person. Mm. So he, so he's not uh, giving. Uh, um, oh, uh, what do they call that? Um, child support. Child support. Yeah. There's no. Thank you. There's no. Um, um, there's no child support being given, right? No. Hmm. Um, Arlene, do you want to say anything? Yeah, so I'd like to say that, um, that <coughs> Try to speak, try to speak a little louder, okay? Yeah, sorry, um. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that they should change some laws for parents with disabilities. They should say, you know, they have, they have a right to, uh, they have a right to their child more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they should have tough laws and look at Trump. He has a child with a disability. What is he talking about? Mm. He has a child with a disability and he and he puts everybody, he's cutting this, he's cutting that. Yeah, he's a child with a disability himself. So you don't want to, he hides everything behind the, the door too. Um, well, Alice, okay, so we have 10 minutes left. Um, okay. Get, can we have some advice? Give give some advice uh, to parents who are really going through this, and knowing that we're, that this is the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Well, huh? my my advice to to parents is to speak out. Mm -hmm. The more people that know, the better it is. Okay. Um, and hopefully one day this will be changed. Well, what yeah. do you mean? What do you mean? The more people know, the better it is. Uh, uh, explain that. Because a lot, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know what's happening. Like I have shared my story, my Al Jazeera report, with parents, and they were so they were horrified. They 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 cried about it. You know, people need to know what's going on. Well, yeah, sure. Well, think about it. The child comes from you. You're the mother. Okay? It's the same thing. When a child dies, and that mother bore, and that parent bore the child, you know, that's a, that's a bad thing, right? It's the same thing. Someone takes your child away, and then also, oh my God, oh my God, you get, you know, you get worried. Yeah. Um. Um. That, you know. Now. It's, a, it's called an ambiguous loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But okay, my question is this: 
you, your child got taken away from you. But there was a point where you were in Vermont going from place to place, right? Yes. So you had a, so you had your child with you? Yes. But wait a minute, if your child got taken away, how did you have your child with you? That's confusing. Okay. My attorney had put in place that the, I would go into custody with her. So I would live, I would live at the same home with her. But that never happened. Yes, that did. But the last home that we lived in was in the state of Virginia, was with a so-called friend who was also a single mom who, um, who had us first in, first she had us in Maryland and then we moved to Virginia and, um, then, then her, her, um, the, ch the child's father was supposed to be paying tax. So at that time, I had got a letter from, from her put on my door that we had 30 days to get out. And then my daughter was placed in foster care in Virginia, temporary foster care. And I was pla I was somewhere else and, um, in Virginia. And there was supposed to be two court hearings, one in Vermont and one in Virginia. I was never on the court hearings in Vermont. So, but when Virginia had found out that Vermont was taking, taking custody back of my daughter, they told me to go wherever my daughter goes. And um, so I took two airplanes to get to this state. And my daughter came back to the state May 2nd, 2008. I came back May 3rd, 2008, May 5th, 2008. I came into the courtroom and my attorney had asked what business set up for the mom and uh, my caseworker was there, her supervisor was there at that time, and she had said, no, we didn't know the mother wasn't cuff the mother was coming. The judge, the first judge, had ordered five days, five day visits with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. And then when they went for TPR, we had a different judge. A what? They went to what? We went for termination from DC. I went for termination of parental rights. We had a different judge, and in our case, the judge was really bad. He was falling asleep on the bench. He was fighting with my attorney. There was something put in from the ADA law, which was just disregarded. As I was entitled to get the reasonable accommodations, and DCF refused. To to do that. So do you think so DCS... it, it basically comes down with it basically comes down with also the judge too. Do you it think right D... after our case mm -hmm. right after our case the judge left the bench. Do you think And D... then and then Al Zira came and then in two thousand and fourteen we write a letter to the Council on the Disabled and, it, and then they said out zero, and it gets revealed. And there's still no change in this state. Look, do you think the state do you... of Vermont, look at it. Look at it. Look what happened here where a social worker had got shot and the person was meant, the mother was mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And now she, now she's, she, the, the um, social worker is not, is gone. The children, her children have to suffer for, for the loss. And they still don't change. Do you think DCF, um, I'm going to ask you two questions. Do you think DCF, if this law is passed, do you think DCF of Vermont will give you an apology? I doubt that. I, 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 I doubt, I wouldn't expect it. Mm. You know, I really wouldn't expect it. You know. Yeah, um, Arlene, before we end the, do you have any more questions? Do you, want to, you have any questions you want to add? Take your time. Um, that you need to know your 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 rights before you go in there. You know you need to know your rights. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think tell, I think I think after they this, they I think they don't tell you right. They think you you, you know, but they should say like. Mm-hmm. Know, I think I I think after this, people are gonna start to think. Once this is passed, I think more rights are gonna be given to parents uh, who are who are dealing with this. Um, Alice. Um, uh, um, Alice, we want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn. Anything else you want to say before we end? Um, no. Okay. I just want to say thank you very much for having me. And thank you for, for supporting parents with disabilities and other disabilities as you are disabled too. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we, uh, well we consider ourselves able because, you know, this gets taken out of it. Anyway, um, we would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, uh, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others for joining us and for sponsoring this program. Um, again, thank you for joining us on this edition of April Dead on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton on Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton on Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International.